And welcome back to another Save the Coach video with me, JD. You are joining me for the first video of 2023. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, and all that jazz. I'm finally back after spending a nice couple of weeks with family, uh, which is really good, but very excited to be back for the Super Coach season for 2023. A few things I'm going to do in this video, mainly I'll go through basically the first team I picked. I did a live video when the when the Supercoach very first opened. Um, I, I've maybe made like a few tweaks, but I haven't really been playing around with my team much instead of been starting to do research, but I'll go through what that starting team was and some of the logic behind the picks, um, just so you can kind of get an idea from where I'm starting at. Um, secondly, I'm going to go through... Uh, I guess like my observations for Supercoach when they first opened, I did a couple of tweet threads over the break, one on that like impressions when I first opened, just on the overall thoughts of the game rather than sp specific player picks, more just theory for strategy, that type of stuff. So I'll go through that. Um, uh, and the other the other thread I did was around content creation for Supercoach uh, in particular. So if you don't follow me on Twitter and you're interested, I, I might try and do more threads this year. They're a fun way to kind of um, write out almost like scripts for videos or like ideas for videos or podcasts um, before I actually um, record them. So if you're interested in those types of things, like, yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter. It's at Jackson Dave. I think it's in the description below. Um, and then um, finally, I guess what content I'm going to create over the preseason. I don't really know, to be honest, um, uh, with Jaws and Eno, um, like Fantasy Tech TV is uh, going to release a website, I believe in the next couple of weeks. And so there's going to be some different and kind of premium content on that. But in terms of my videos, it's always been just me creating stuff that I'd like to watch or find interesting or I'm researching myself and then just make content based on that. Um, and hopefully that other people find it interesting too. Sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. I think one of the best series I did was the fundamentals, which I think was last year, kind of going through the basics of super coach, building a team, how you make decisions, how you pick players, a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, and some of the theory behind that, I don't think the viewing did well, but I think it's like some of the like, it's the probably the only super coach stuff that is actually um is worth watching like a year later than what it's created that's problem a big problem with content in super coach spaces you you create something a week later it's not worthwhile but um where i'm going with kind of this rambling bit is um i'm still figuring out what I actually want to make videos for over the preseason so if you've got ideas or suggestions or things you think would be cool or other content creators you want me to work with or do an interview with like please let me know um, i'm really interested to hear what you guys think um, what I did in the Discord was actually ask which lines you're struggling to pick from or make a, a team with the most. Um, and I believe defense led just beat out rucks at the moment, which I think is is probably right. Um, those two do feel slightly tougher, um, having reflected on a little bit. Um, so I think I might do a like a maybe even hour long, like just um, a stat or two uh, or some discussion on all the defenders um and and well at least like the mostly relevant ones there'll be a lot of irrelevant ones in there anyway it kind of depends on where you cut that off but i think that might be the next video i do but yeah i'm like keen to hear suggestions and whatnot um but yeah let's let's jump into this one we'll go through the team i'll go through um some of the the tweets um and then we'll sign off and uh, i'll see you in the next one uh okay so in defense uh I think there's lots of good options um, for defenders. And now I feel like I can't even talk about this properly because if it's the next video, I kind of don't want to give away all the secret sauce. Uh, but of the of the kind of top ones here, like I don't think Sinclair is going to be a good option. There's talk that he's moving into the midfield. We haven't seen midfield pan out necessarily as well. Um, so don't like that. I, I like Sicily. I like Stewart. I like Dawson. I'm a little bit interested in Doherty. Uh, and then Brayshaw is probably the next one of the top 10 that I'm, um, have an interest in, which is just out of screen for you. There he is Brayshaw. Um, uh, just because, you know, he obviously finished in the midfield last year, put up some really good numbers there. Uh, but for now, I think the two that I want, uh, Stewart and Dawson. Um, so Dawson is the one that was first picked. It was one of my boys from last year, if you were following and that paid off. Well, it's just unfortunate that he, didn't blow up earlier, wait until the second half of the year. But um, Dawson kind of found his, his home, um, it, like really interesting role, like played mostly wing um, across the course of the year, but then would um, rotate back into defense and kind of play intercepting defender role as well. He'd take kick-ins, kind of just did everything for um, the Crows as one of the better ball users in the game, one of the better decision makers. 
loved his game. Um, so yeah, I think still still think there's upside. He could go higher than the one and nine and a half. Um, Stewart is the one. It's just like not having him um, can burn you really badly. So we like we saw this um, this year. He's got this really high ceiling. Can go like 180, 170 back to back games. Um, and if you don't have him for those games, you then feel like you have to get him. Um, and like he does have uh, durability concerns, which is generally players we try and avoid. I think the only time you don't is when they've got these high ceilings because what happens is you don't own them. They score really well for a couple of games. You feel like you have to trade them in. Then they get injured uh, and you've missed the good scores and you've picked up the injury. So uh, it's probably the type of player that I'd like to start just because of the upside um, at the pick. Um, but yeah, and then Sicily, I think, is like the other interesting premium one. He got better as the year went on. Um, I've got a couple of stats to back that up, which might save for the Defender uh, video. But um, that's, I think, promising that he continues to get better next year coming off the ACL. And Hawks aren't going to demonstrably improve. So you'd imagine, if anything, they might get slightly worse. So um, with just like that hard cut rebuild. So you could see a lot of ball coming down back. Um, was kind of worried with all the options last year that they would share some of those duties. But it just seemed as the year went on, the, the, like the longer it went on, the more they just wanted to give it to Sicily rather than share, uh, which is interesting. So um, yeah, he could be a good pick uh, here as well. Um then I like I think originally I might have picked like Yo or someone like that. Um, who I am, I, I know a lot of people don't want to touch Yo at all. I am interested in him for sure. Just see how preseason goes. He's apparently back and running. So, um, yeah. But next up is Bose. Uh, there's a lot of like, well, is he even best 22? And that is definitely a conversation worth having as we get closer to round one. I think there's a couple of avenues for him to be best 22. Um, the, uh, the, the, it'll come down to like, what role is that? Is that a halfback role? Is it a mid role? Is that a hybrid? We saw Duncan, for example, last year, get put into halfback a lot and then move up to the wing. Um, that's the type of, uh, like person that could maybe like replace a Selwood role. And then Bose takes Duncan's role. Um, it, that, that's very similar to what they pitched is what Duncan was doing last year. I think you also had like Atkins come in as a key midfield rotation, could Bose be a better midfielder than um, uh, Atkins? Totally. I think people uh, are doubting Bo's ability a lot and also forget that the Cats were recruiting him prior to any talk of pick seven being on the table. And they're still paying him, what, seven, 800K, whatever he's rumored to be on um, regardless. So I would imagine they do something with him this year. He could definitely go to 400K plus at this price. So... Um, yeah, I'm interested, but we'll wait and see. I mean, he may not be a pick. Next up, I'll go with Caulfield. Uh, talks are he tweaked his hammy again pre-Christmas. He is absolutely injury-prone, um, old Nick Caulfield, but he's someone that if he comes back in January fine, does the full preseason from that point, I would probably rather have him in my team than not, as he's someone I could see going like 80, 85. Um as I mentioned, like talk that Sinclair might be training more in the mids and Caulfield's the type of player that could be taking over um, some of those halfback rebounding duties, uh, which gives him even more um, uh, upside at his price. Uh, I think from this point on, I would have just filled in more rookie. So let's go with um, Goda. A few people have already got on him, mentioned him. He had one game last year, which unfortunately elevated his price quite a lot. I think he scored like 80 or something in it. What was his average? Uh, 70. Um, uh, but yeah, he's someone that is uh, taller. I believe he's like 190 plus um, uh, halfback um, rebounding type. Uh, I thought he's going to get more games than what he did last year, to be honest, but he should be in a prime position, especially like if Hall doesn't get games or at least gets moved out of defense um, to take over a really good role down back. So I think he's going to end up being very good for his price. And then McKenna... We'll see what happens, but um, there's a lot of just assumption that he's going to go play half back, which I think makes sense from Brisbane Lions perspective. They need more rebound out of defense, um, like with leg speed. I don't particularly rate their speed, even though they've got other good users. So McKenna would definitely bring that, bring some electricity, but 
part of the problem with McKenna at the end of his tenure at Essen was he wanted to play forward. So I'm not sure what's been agreed with um, the Lions or not, but yeah, um, someone to watch and see. And then like, there's so many rookies you could put in here. Like Wilmot, we saw through the finals. There's some concern with McKenna now that he maybe won't get a game. Um, Dean for the Pies is a good enough one. We'll pop him in. Um, so uh, a key position defender was meant to debut last year, got injured. Uh, then he, I think, returned and got injured again, I want to say. Um, slash like um, Murphy. I think it was Murphy. Was it Murphy? Yeah, Nathan Murphy um, played pretty well. Uh, so like Dean didn't really get a chance to break into that side, but he's someone that could come and play um, key defense. You've got Gould, um, who's yeah, a bit of a meme, but he could be an option. Otherwise, like Chessa is, was meant to get a debut last year. Should play like outside wing type, which for a poor team probably isn't the most attractive thing in the world. But um, yeah, like reasonably high first round draft pick. So um, uh, yep, I mean, they're rookies. We'll wait and see what happens with these guys. But um, it's worth having, I guess, some of these more expensive ones, just like either as placeholders or you're aware of. And then the 123K guys, I'm pretty confident that they'll turn up. Uh, midfield. Okay. So, um, in general, my philosophy is don't pick the really expensive guys, which is hard because everyone's expensive. Um, but the 700 K group, I'm probably going to avoid. I will need to look into probably Clayton Oliver in particular's numbers again, just to reconfirm this. I'm not as worried about missing lead. I'm quite worried about, um, not starting Oliver, but like, I guess like quickly, the reason why like you don't start them is because even if they like back this up and go like 130, right? They two or three point upside of their price. They're not going up in price. So you're never going to lose value not starting them, which is generally why it's best to bet against them. Also like players that score this well don't tend to back it up. Some do, most don't. Um, now the only thing that I potentially miss out on here is captain's points, but that assumes that you can't find someone at 600K that then goes like 125 or whatever it may be. And generally you can. So am I worried about missing out on Laird or Oliver just because Captain scored? Not really. I don't think they've got really upside at their price, even though both could go more. Like if Oliver finished the year averaging 135, I wouldn't put that out of the realm of possibility. I just I think it's unlikely. So um, these types I tend to um, not go with. I think Neil is going to be like still prime um, tag target for the Lions, um, even though Dunkley's over there. And the... Um, Having Dunkley there probably improves like Neil's efficiency in some way um, and maybe even elevates him as an actual footballer, but I don't think it translates to super coach scores. In fact, if anything, um, the loss of opportunity should hurt his score. So I think this goes backwards. Uh, so um, then players here. So like Bont is probably the one that I really like. Um, he's scoring. I need to double check some of this stuff, but he's scoring without Dunkley from memory is pretty good. The other one you could look at in the same boat is McRae, but I'm not as sold at the moment just because I'm a little bit unsure with where, the, where Bevo wants him. Is he playing wing? Is he going to play on the ball? Um, how does it work with Baslenka? How does it work with like McLean? Uh, so yeah. Um, anyway, Bont really happy with Mills. A uh, little bit worried with him getting thrown behind the ball and whatnot. So um, he's just like he could bit of a miss to fix it. And you've got other use coming through that could like take over um, some responsibilities that Mills has on, on ball. So uh, uh very good pick, but I probably won't start him. So yeah, like Took is probably the one. It's like it's gonna be like Took or McRae, someone like that probably that I pick here as well. Uh, we better order these by um, expensiveness, otherwise it's gonna draw my attention away. So I think Miller and Bont are the two here that I start with. Um, Merritt's a back half of the season special. Brayshaw I haven't thought about too much. I think there's some talk that he'll play more outside now that they've got Amira as well as Fife coming back. Um, which is a shame, which is a shame. I like him on the ball. And I think the other thing is like none of Fife, Brody or Amira do defensive stuff. So if they're playing more of those guys in the middle, who's doing the hard nut defensive stuff? Is it Sarong and then Brayshaw when he's got rotations on the ball? Yeah, a bit unfair. Um, Cripps is somewhat interesting given that uh, uh, Walsh in particular is out. And I think, is Hewitt struggling again? Um yeah, I mean, he he scored really well without these guys on the side last year, I think. So I need to double check that depending on how long they're out for. But um, yeah, Cripps, I guess, is like somewhat a consideration. Mm, Parrish is hard to touch. Uh, Steele is next up. 
he went what 120 last year even more um then pulled back i think there's like some you know he had the shoulder and stuff which played into it there's some concern about what happens with ross the boss and what his game style looks like but i think um as is 604k is very good value for steel so happy to place um a bet there kelly's somewhat interesting with whatever happens at gws None of these other guys really interest me until we get to the group that um, is somewhat interesting. So like LDU, Anderson, people don't talk about him that much, I think, but Bazelink is pretty interesting. Uh, Tom Green and Warner and then Tom Mitchell. So all this kind of um, like 100 kind of average mark, they showed signs last year, which of them are going to break out. And I definitely think there's scope for a couple of them to get there. Um, so LDU, I like a lot, but I think the first one I'd pick is Tom Green. I, one of the first picked for me at the moment, there's no Hopper, there's no Taranto. Who is the on ball mid for GWS? It is Green. He is the bull. He's the contested ball winner. Uh, him, Cogs and Kelly make the starting three, I think for GWS. And then it'll be interesting to see who pops in the mix. Like, do you get like Callahan? Um, who else Who else are they going to throw in? But yeah, it's Green's time to shine. Uh, I've got some numbers somewhere where I looked at what his averages were when he attended a ruck contest in a game versus when he didn't. And there's a very stark difference. Um, but yeah, I see scope for Tom Green to go 110 at, at this, which I think makes him a good pick. It puts him top. Oh, what's this? around the top 10 mark what 10 was one 112 so yeah i think he can do that uh which at his price would be a win and then the other one which i've got which i don't love at the moment it's just that the team i've kind of got saved at the moment is like a value-based team is uh tom mitchell i'm i'm tossing around on this pick a lot i'm probably more leaning towards not studying him than studying him but it is what it is for now um so yeah, like he's done 125, 130 in the past. Uh, absolute ball pig. Had a lot fewer CBAs at the Hawks last year as Mitchell aggressively um, swapped Tom Mitchell out of their game plan in order of blood and youth through CBAs. So he was playing 40%-ish CBAs where he should be getting 70 to 80% as like a pure on balder. Actually, maybe it was more like 50, 50%, 55% CBAs, but it, it just wasn't the full quota he should be getting. And said playing like a pretty average half forward role at times or playing forward of the ball, which really isn't his forte. I think one of the things we saw with Fly McRae last year is that he played a lot of players to their strengths. He didn't do a lot of like weird switch ups of positions or whatever it may be outside of like what crisp rotated positions. And that like they experiment with some stuff, but if it doesn't play to their strengths, it, they, those changes don't stick. Um, so I would imagine they've recruited Mitchell with the promise and the idea that you're playing on ball, that is your strength, that is your one wood. So I think he gets the role, absolutely. The only question, well, there's two questions here is like, how does he interact with Adams? Um, and then uh, secondly, um, uh, does Collingwood's game style allow him to go 110 plus? No Collingwood player averaged 100 uh, last year, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, so there you go. Like none of them went hundred. Uh, that's mid, but it's also true for all the other lines. You had what <laughs> Pendles that didn't go ninety five. Was that the top? It's crazy. Um, so yeah. So does that game style actually allow someone to average a one ten or one one fifteen? Uh, but yeah, those are some thoughts. I'm not sold on Titch, but he's inside for now. I don't like starting two of these lower priced um, players, uh, which is also probably one of the reasons why I don't like it. But I do like Green, Mitchell, and I like LDU. I think people aren't giving Anderson enough respect, probably because it's like there's a bit of um, anti-Gold Coast kind of bias. Like no one's really looking at that team. Um, you know, getting news stories or anything like that on them. So uh, yeah, all right. Uh, and then... So next up is going to be the one that is in like everyone's side. Kind of each year, um, there are players that are litmus test for how many people are taking the game seriously, right? Like you you look at ownership percent for coaches and you see like 65% and you go, okay, there's 200,000 entries, but I know 65% are playing seriously. And like Hopper is one of those picks along with uh, one other one, like probably Dunkley. 
um, that are like, oh, okay, that's how many coaches are taking the game seriously this year. I think Hopper should be in 100% of sides at the moment. He's so underpriced in what he can deliver. He's gone, what, high 90s? I want to say um, last time he was fit and on ball, and that's all he's going to be doing at Tigers. They're just going to be playing him on ball. So he should be able to easily make 150K, if not 200, 250. Unlikely to be a keeper, but someone that you could hold quite late and then um, figure out what to do then. Uh, all right, next one is Ashcroft. And I will say that like while I picked him straight up, I am not actually sure that starting him is right. Uh, so a couple of reasons, um, a little bit unsure what happens this year with their mids. I know Lions fell out of favor last year, but apparently it's because he had OP. So, you know, could they be playing uh, more Lions in there? Robertson, Dev Robertson was like developing well as well. Rainer, I don't think it's any mid time, which is the right call. Um, and then Dunkley comes in as well. So, uh, is Ashcroft going to get it enough mid time? And I think people point to like Dacos, uh, Dacos and Walsh and these types, like other uh, number one picks that came in and did really well first year. Uh, the the difference is that they played for poorer sides. I mean, Dacos didn't in the end, but it, the perception was that um, Collingwood was a poorer side and then given lots of opportunity. I'm just not sure how much opportunity Ash Ashcroft is going to be given, even though he's got the same pedigree as, as them. Um so yeah, like it's a bit of an opportunity question. 200K is a lot. And when you've got guys like um, uh, like Finn Callahan here, who's second year player, he's only 40K more, but could be getting a good GWS role, for example, in the midfield. Uh, it does mean that there are other options to consider that aren't, aren't Ashcroft. Um, it may seem a little bit crazy to like talk about not starting him, but yeah, I think there's a chance that we don't. Uh... I originally had Sardis, I think, in, in the team because it's been talked about quite highly at Essendon training, but I did my best one too and actually don't have him in it unless he really impresses in the midfield um, for round one. So, uh, yep, so took him back out. Um, but, yeah, that'll change, obviously, with um, preseason. Who knows what will happen with rookies. Really shouldn't talk about this uh, about them this much. Uh, Phillips, like high draft pick from, uh, what, a couple of years ago now, had uh, a glandular fever, I think, twice last year or something crazy like that. Um, so yeah, he's cheaply priced, could explode. Um, Matthew Johnson was a high midfield draft pick from last year. Also had injury problems, um, but full preseason may get a decent role. Although it's a little bit worrying with some of the other acquisitions made to the free side. Um, I can't get Chad Warner as much as I like him. So Corey is going to have to do for now. Uh, and then, uh, Darcy Jones, someone who could get minutes for GWS, but that's a wait and see. Um, okay. So, I mean, there's a bench rookie. Who's cares? Uh, Rux. Rux is, um, the other line that I mentioned that a lot of people are struggling with. And I, I get that. I look at this and I'm not super excited I, in the tweets. I'll talk about a little bit why I think Rux hard this year. Like I, I'm pretty sure I wrote that in there. It's been a while since I looked at the thread now. Uh, so, Uh, Gorn, I don't think you can pick at this price. Wits is a maybe. Uh, English is one that I'm probably starting at the moment. It's a little bit like Stuart. We saw the upside last year, even though I'm worried about the durability. Um, uh, yeah, so one thing I, I talk about in the thread with Rux is that you're seeing more clubs go to playing two Rux, and so you kind of want to pick, um, or you, you're going to be looking, wanting to look for guys where like they are the sole Ruck. And so with in, uh, with Lob coming in, like that's clearly going to be the pinch hitter. They're not going to run another ruck like Sweet on top of that. So English is kind of like safe as a number one ruck. I think Wits is in the same boat as like a clear number one ruck. Grundy and Gorn suffer from playing with each other. Even though like they're both underpriced on their best. Darcy's underpriced on his best, but now has Jackson in the side as well. So it's a little bit of wait and see what Freya decides to do in the preseason. Obviously, Darcy both came into the year underdone and then was injured throughout. So full preseason is pretty interesting for him. But yeah, the Jackson factor is not great. O'Brien, I think there's a chance that he gets um, unseated by Strawn this year. So I wouldn't touch that. Nick Nat could pay dividends, but pretty hard to trust. And also like the type of player that could get subbed out um, in the fourth quarter, just given his low time on ground. Blitz is great, but they've got uh, Segler who may usurp Stanley. Um, and like Blitz scored best one. I think he was Sol Ruck. So yeah, not happening. Nank uh, just probably isn't a, a top enough Ruck. Lice, uh, oh, scrolled down too far. Um, Goldie is a gun. 
apparently he, what did i read he finished like fourth in their um uh, time trial in the preseason like what a beast or it just speaks to the rest of the fitness but yeah that's crazy good on you goldie um so yeah marshall was one that i originally had here with the ben king injury or oh, max king oh my god i swapped them again <sighs> st kilda and gold coast fans are gonna hate me um i should just say king and not 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 say a first name anyway with king's injury a little bit worried about what happens with their replacements so they could play Hayes, who is aiming to return round one. If it's not round one, it'll be shortly after, and Campbell. And so you kind of play like three rucks. I'm a little bit worried. Like Campbell's not a great forward. So does that mean Marshall plays more forward? If Marshall was sole ruck and they were playing King and Hayes and Campbell wasn't playing, then I would be, I think, slamming this pick, but probably not for now. Um. Lloyd Meek is, I think, quite interesting. I wish he'd got a bigger discount, to be honest. Um, he played too well in the six games he played last year. If he was clear number one ruck, which I, he might be, but I think Hawks' structure is just to play two rucks, which means that this is probably pretty hard to pick. But yeah, um, the other one that's interesting here is Cameron, who I'll select for now. He's a bit of value as well. Um, I've seen a few people posting numbers about him already of like what he averaged with different plays inside. He's lost with this Grundy, who's no longer there. His next loss with, with Cox was with Cox, uh, who I don't think is in the best 22 with McStay coming in. I think Mr. McStay replaces Cox. He can also pinch it. And then Cameron just plays the the uh, ruck. And then like he scored best when they had Beg as the um, as the number two on the side, I believe it was, with like a 105, 106 average. But yeah, he's, he's priced at 85. I think he can go somewhere between 95, 105, you know, probably high 90s. High 90s gets you very close to the top six for the forwards or actually, um, oh, something got moved down to midfielders. But yeah, like it's it's good enough to be up around the top six. Um, so I think uh, even though he's probably not a keeper as a ruck, he's probably not a top two ruck. He'll uh, be close enough to the forwards. I can swing him in there and then pick whichever ruck uh, does end up being the, the best option um, next to English. Uh, for the rookie... I haven't heard of any of these potentially getting games at the moment. So I've just picked the cheapest one that has um, DPP, which is Madden. And then onto the forwards, let's just pick the ones that everyone are picking, which is Dunkley, Rosie, Taranto. If I do a forwards video, I could go into it a little bit more. Um, uh, Dill Moore, I really liked as an option, but it sounds like he's going to be playing more forward, which is a shame. Cogs is actually somewhat interesting. I like. I think people are overlooking him. I need to go and do research on whether this is a real pick or not. Heaney's probably a no. Uh, Butters is like hard done because I think most other years, if you didn't have these other three options, like Butters is like a really easy pick. Um, but yeah, not citing him. Uh, Himmelberg, it sounds like he's training in forward. Otherwise, he was a slam dunk. And then like, yeah, you could be playing Cameron. Oops, you could be playing Cameron in your uh, forward line rather than uh, your ruck if you've got two rucks that you really like. All right. Um, and then uh, for, for now, this is like, right, well, this is probably less controversial than uh, than Yo, but yeah, five's in my side for now. At his best, he'll absolutely destroy this. Uh, oh, let's just, uh, let's see if I can move this up. Nope. There we go. Nope. What is going on? Come on, recording equipment. Why won't you uh, show the bottom? Oh, sorry. Just have to scroll. Um, that's so annoying. Um, sorry. So I'm not going to edit that out either. So double apologies to anyone that just had to sit through like 10 seconds of that. Um, yeah, so five probably slightly less controversial than yo but i if he's fully fit i don't see how you can't pick him he's going to get somewhere between 40 and 60 percent cbas with that he can still easily go into the 90s he's going to return you a lot of money at this price point yes the injury risk is there but he could even go 100s honestly um and be a keeper at this price so Yep, I think you probably just have to start him if he goes through the preseason uninterrupted and it looks like he's going to be getting like 50% CBAs.
we'll see what what happens what gets discussed but yep uh there's lots of good forward options here like for example if i'm not starting fife i'd probably go to like oscar allen or someone like that uh but we've got mclean uh, who, yeah, got some mid time towards the end of last year. Thankfully, still cheap. We've got Bruce, who the talk is that he's training as an intercept defender, which would make him interesting if he ends up being best 22. And then I've got Stone, who could potentially get a better role this year. And Joe Richards, I think I had, who was the mature age recruit for the Pies. So there you go. That's the team um, uh, for now. Uh don't love it. Don't hate it. Um, Mitchell pick. I'm not sure about, um, uh, I feel like the forwards a little bit too heavy at the moment, but yeah, like it's, it's fine. All right. Uh, I realized like this video has already gone for 30 minutes. Ooh. Um, let's talk about these tweets quickly. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So all this was, was just like, having a think and reflection on the team and some of the players that when it first opened, how I think the game's kind of going to play out this year. You can see it's December 18, pre-Christmas. Um, so yeah, forward line appears easier this year um, than other years, which I totally still believe to be the case. In fact, I think the easiest forward line people thought, uh, the easiest line people thought uh, this year was to pick was the forward line, uh, which I, it's the first year I remember that being the case in like three or four. You've got a lot of really good um premiums from last year that are still forward eligible. So, yep. Um, Dunkley, Rosalie, Taranto. Yep. I think it's going to be really pop popular. There's heaps of mature forwards that look like they could be best 22 return cash, which we usually struggle with. We usually end up being forced to pick like a 123k key forward or small forward that ends up not working. So lots of um, potential uh, players here that could end up being in our sides. And I think I might've even missed some from that. Um, yeah. So forward line exists, it's been in years. Um, the mid price range is quite dire, I would say compared to prior years. There are people that are interested in this range, but a lot has to work out for them. Like, so Bose, Yo, Hopper and Fife and Mika talked about a little bit. Thomas had like already souring on a little bit, but um, there's talk he could have a pretty good role. So we'll see what happens over the preseason. Beyond that, there's not a lot. There are some other stuff, but there's not, there's not tons. So, um, it feels almost more guns and rookies, or at least like you're looking for value in kind of sub premiums rather than mid prices, which it might be even riskier to do that than, than other ways. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, here you go. You might be like more guns and rookies and like importance on nailing value premiums, like the green and Mitchell types, uh, for example. Um, Oh yes, the hardest to do this in might be defenders, which I guess is why people are struggling or feel like they're struggling with it a little bit is um, like, you can see why some of the top liners from last year um, could improve, but like, it's not obvious which one it is. So nailing his picks might be hard. And then you've got a bunch of cheaper options. Um, I've listed out some of them here and I'll go through it in the defender video um, that that could um, go into top six. Um, and picking those gives you a pretty big leg up if you end up getting them for... 50 to 100k cheaper than what everyone else pays for them plus you get the points uh and then like finally the tried and true method that we we look for to pick defenders has traditionally been those that are actually playing midfield cba roles like hewitt last year but short and crisp didn't pan out um last year so like yeah is this something we have to reevaluate? is being a midfielder like necessarily a good thing um mckenna is good caulfield and clark oh yeah clark was one of the mid prices i didn't discuss up there but yeah um, could like, yeah, if they overcome the injuries, they could both be interesting. And then yeah, go to as high as some, um, uh, uh, expensive rookie. Um, rucks are going to be a pain again, which is no surprise to anyone and go through the team video. You can kind of see why there isn't really obvious, uh, any obvious ins, um, to pick. There's a lot of like maybes, which is a little bit like the defense line makes it, um, uh, hard, but at least I guess like set and forget is easy, but it's kind of boring. So it's, it, maybe it's a good thing that playing out like that. Um, and we talked about this already, like the uh, teams are moving towards playing two rucks and with the sub rule, maybe that happens even more in which case, um, finding teams that, um, uh, have fewer number of rucks becomes more important. Um, a lot of expensive mids this year and like it's true defenders as well. Um, uh, yeah. And I think best strategies to avoid plays over 700 K so, yep. But 
oh, this is exactly what I said in my video. It's crazy. I haven't read these tweets since I um, uh, did them. And like three weeks on, I'm still having the same thoughts. Like it's really hard to say no to Oliver, even though like the rule is no plays that price. Um, I like lots of those mid prices that we talked about in the midfield. Um, uh, but yeah, like the the bottom end of these rookies, I actually don't like a lot of what I've seen here. Not a ton of talk of like the guys at the 123K range, or at least ones I've seen that necessarily get games early on. Um, and the more expensive ones, I just don't love some of the options that we've got in there. So I, like, I think this might be tricky and you end up seeing deeper midfields, you know, like yeah, only one or two rookies on field um, and then three on the bench. Uh... Uh, this will like come out in the defender video a little bit, but talking about um, tagging halfbacks becomes like more prevalent. Um, uh, but like you generally don't see it early on the season, so maybe something not necessarily like to worry about a lot. And anyway, that was the that was the tweet thread. So those are some initial thoughts. There's probably some other stuff that I've got to add since then, but um, I said that I'd probably put it into a video at some point, and I've tacked it onto the back of this one so I can kind of say I fulfilled that promise and then move on. Um, but yep, that is the video. So thanks for joining me for the first one back for the year. Hopefully you enjoyed kind of the team review, talking through the process of picking those players a little bit. I wouldn't take this too seriously at the moment. As I mentioned, I'm still doing a lot of my research now into uh, players and teams and all that type of stuff. So this will evolve as that goes on. And the biggest thing as always is rookies determine structure. And there's a lot that we still need to learn about them. And we only get that information once we start going through full preseason training, as well as some of the practice games. And that is of course, of all, of course, all coming over the next couple of months. But uh, yeah, I've been JD. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.